Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be so much fun. I have a ton of thrift flips, trash to treasure, DIYs planned for this video. I'm also trying out some new painting techniques such as white wax on some wood. I'm also going to be trying that out on a piece of pottery that I'm flipping. And then I'm also transforming some different pottery pieces to look like little crocs using my IOD crockery stamp set. So a lot of fun and hopefully inspiring projects to come in this video. Before we get started, I wanted to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of videos for curious and creative people. It is perfect for picking up some skills for weekend projects like these and so much more. Since we are moving into spring and I notoriously have a black thumb, I found a video taught by Christopher Griffin called Plants at Home, How to Uplift Your Spirit and Space. And throughout the video, I learned so many things things about how to find the best places in your home for plants, as well as how to research which plants would work the best in your space. By the end of the video, I felt so empowered that even I could go out and find some house plants and really help them thrive in my home. If you would like to try out Skillshare for yourself, the first 1,000 people who use the link in my description box will receive a free trial of Skillshare Premium, and then after that, it's only about $10 a month. Thanks again, Skillshare, for sponsoring today's video. Now let's go ahead and get started. If you watched my last thrift haul video, then you may remember these little Crocs. They were almost like a pinkish orange, really bright color. So the other day I decided to go ahead and start painting these. They did take about three coats to really cover all of that bright color. And uh, when I first started painting them, I went in with this Waverly chalk paint in the color Mineral. It's just like a really light gray color, but I did feel like that was too dark. And I based my color matching off of this piece of ironstone pottery that I'm also going to be using the IOD stamp on today. So I tried my best to color match it, and I found the best color that I could come up with with what I had was the Waverly Mineral chalk paint mixed with the Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. This is pretty much a white, just a little bit creamier. It's not as bright of a white. Um, so I just figured it would be more antique like. So I just mixed um, probably I would say 75% of the plaster with 25% of the mineral paint. And I think that I did a pretty good job color matching them. Now that I'm sure I have the bright color painted and I'm not gonna need to add any more coats, I'm going in with this acrylic sealer with a matte finish. And I was kind of in a hurry when I grabbed this. If I had to do it again, I would have gotten a little bit of a shiny finish, I believe, just because, as you can see with the ironstone, there is some shine to it. So I may go back in and add when I'm all done after the stamp, I may go in and pick up um, some kind of sealer that's not matte to just go over the top, but let's go ahead and put this on so it can start drying and we'll just kind of see how it looks. I made sure to spray the sealer on the inside too, just so that if I wanted to use them to display silverware or something, the paint would not chip off. So while my Crocs are drying, I am going to be moving on to project number two. And if you watched my thrift haul video, I found four, I believe it was four of these milk glass bud vases. I don't know if they're real milk glass or if they're just white little bud vases. Either way, I love them and I thought they would be so perfect to display some florals for spring. I also thought that you could use them as candlestick holders. Let me know if anyone's tried that before because I think it would work, but I don't know. I would definitely have to supervise <laughs> if I tried that. Um, or I could use like the battery powered ones maybe if they would fit. So anyway, once I found the four out thrifting, I looked on Facebook Marketplace and I was able to find more. So now I have a set of 12 and I have um, four tall and the rest are short. So I wanted to come up with a really cool like tablescape to display all of them together. So I ran over to Lowe's and I picked up pre-cut raw wood pieces and we just used a drill gun to connect them all together. And I went ahead and I painted it this Waverly chalk paint in the shade Hazelnut. 
This is my go-to color for painting any of like my wood pieces if I'm gonna leave them out around my house for decor. It really matches my vent hood and other wood accents. It's just a beautiful, light, warm brown color and I've had this bottle forever. It lasts such a long time. So after my one coat of the hazelnut chalk paint dried, I really like the shade but I wanted it to look more of a weathered look. So what I'm going to be trying today is a new technique using white wax. You can purchase white wax, but I heard that it's hard to find. So I just went to Walmart and I found this Waverly Clear Wax. This is what it looks like. And then I'm just going to be mixing it with the same paint I used on my Crocs, the Waverly Chalk Paint in Plaster. And I read online that the measurements to make your own white wax is three parts wax to one part um, of the white paint. One of the things I really liked about making your own wax is you can mix and match colors. If you wanted to try like a gray or a teal or a different kind of wax, you can add whichever color you want to your wax. So that'll be cool today. I just wanted to have like a very weathered look. So I figured this white color would look nice. Originally for the wax, I thought I was going to have to put it in like hot water to kind of melt and like get to that liquid form, but I was pleasantly surprised when I opened it that it's already like a liquid. It kind of looks like the consistency of Mod Podge. So I am just going to go ahead and mix this up and then we will get started. I will say a little of this stuff goes a long way, but I did decide to double the batch since I knew I was going to be using it on at least two projects. And as you can see, it's a very runny consistency. Now I'm just going to apply this all over with a paintbrush and then going back in with my rag to wipe it off. Since I'm going for a weathered look, I plan to remove most of the white wax and the rubbing process with a rag just helps to remove any excess and really set the wax into the wood grains. When I use this white wax technique in the future, I think rather than adding all the white wax on the piece at once and then going back to rub it off, I would rather work in sections because I noticed that the white wax, when it dried, it was harder and harder for me to remove it. Um, but the good thing is I just wet my rag a bit and that helped get up the white wax that kind of dried a little bit. So I will say the overall process does take some elbow grease, but the final result is so worth it. I am so happy with how this turned out. It's actually exactly what I was hoping the shade would look like. Just a naturally aged weathered wood. I love it so much. You can see this is what the wood started as, just raw. And then this is what the final product looks like. I was worried when I first started scrubbing off the white wax that I waited too long and that I should have just 
did it in sections um, because it was a little bit hard to wipe off in areas but I noticed if I wet my rag it came off a lot easier so since I did go through a few times with a wet rag I'm just gonna let it sit here before I add it to my table and then put the pretty bud vases in but really happy with how it looks I'm definitely gonna be using that method again Moving right along to project number three, this was another thrift find and I actually think it's really beautiful and will make an awesome little planter or at least a little vessel to put a faux plant in. But um, the only thing that I wasn't crazy about was the color. It's kind of like a yellowish cream spackled color. Um, so what I plan on doing is using this Waverly chalk paint in mineral, the gray color painting this thing completely in that not sure if it's going to take one coat or two but then once that is painted and dried we are going to go in with my leftover white wax mixture and apply it on top dab it off and it's supposed to give it a cement finish so let's see how this turns out I think the white wax technique is going to look awesome on this piece and just make all of the pretty patterns really pop. I always paint the insides of pieces that I'm redoing even if I plan to put something inside of them like for example this one I plan to put a faux plant but you never know maybe down the road I'll change my mind and want to display it differently so I always paint the inside just in case. I just went ahead and added one more coat of the sealer on the Crocs before I go ahead and get my stamps out. I'm just nervous that I'm going to mess up the stamp and when I go to wipe it off it's not going to come off that easily so I really want to load it up with the sealer really well. Um, but while everything's drying I wanted to show you my most recent Goodwill haul and just a few items that I picked up that I will be doing more flips with in videos like this. So if you enjoyed this one make sure you are subscribed with the notification bell on so you will be notified every Every time I upload. This is definitely not one of my biggest thrift hauls but I have been so obsessed with finding baskets with tops ever since I found that picnic basket. If you know what kind of basket this one is, um, I don't know if it's a picnic basket, it doesn't really look like it, but I like that it has a top. It's really clean and in good shape and this is a cute latch but what I am thinking of doing with these is kind of getting a whole bunch of different kinds of baskets with a top and stacking them and then maybe putting a plant on top I don't know maybe this is even like a little suitcase I'm not sure but um, everything at Goodwill was half off so I got this for let's see it was $9.99 so I got this for five bucks and I figure maybe if nothing else, it's something I could keep in my daughter's room and she can use it for like dress up clothes or doll clothes, something like that. You can just never go wrong with an affordable basket. And then this piece I thought was just really handy. It's this little wooden chalkboard and it's a stand, which is nice. And on the other side, is a cork board so I thought maybe I could keep this in my kitchen somewhere I could pin maybe like a little recipe if I cut one out of a magazine or write a cute little message on here with chalk I don't know it's small enough where it can fit on a shelf it can kind of go anywhere and this one was let me see here $4.99 so I got that one for half off. I'm probably not going to do anything to flip this. I'll just keep it as is. But I thought I would have a fun time decorating with this. And then this piece is the one that I think I'm going to have some fun with. So I love peg rails. 
and I've always been looking for one that has a little shelf on top. I also love rolling pins, so when I saw this little rolling pin, it kind of just sealed the deal for me. I had to have it. This was $10, I got it for five, and I figured it would be a really fun flip DIY. Um, the only thing is, I don't know if I have room in my kitchen for it, and I did figure out a way to remove the rolling pin, so I may just take the rolling pin out and just display it in a crock, and then just repaint this one and repurpose it all together for a different space. But I just thought this would be so fun, and for $5, I figured I could have a good time repurposing this. All right, it is time to get started with the stamps. I feel like I've been dragging my feet on this because I am a little bit nervous that I'm not gonna be able to do it right. But I, I'm going to start with my ironstone piece and I figured this would be a good one because it's gonna be easy to just wipe away if I do mess up. I fully expect this to take a couple tries. So I have my ironstone, it's washed, but there definitely is some um, signs of just use and age in this, but I love this little crock. One of my favorite thrift finds in a while, actually. I forgot what I paid for it. I wanna say like three, two to three dollars. Um, and then here are all of the different stamp options. They are flexible, which is great if you're using like little rounded pottery pieces but I am kind of nervous how I'm going to stamp that. But yeah, we'll see. I'm just gonna try it out and we will learn together. So I'm trying to figure out which one I wanna do. Probably this one, I'm thinking this one. I'm gonna have to use one of these smaller ones for the little crocs that are drying outside just because they are small, but they have so many options. And I did hear that they are gonna be restocking this set online around May, so I will keep you guys updated. Make sure you're following me on Instagram. I guess it kinda of just peels off like this. And then I don't have the IOD um, ink. I'm just using an ink pad that I got from Michaels, I believe, so I'm hoping this will work. I'm definitely gonna go over the ink with um, that sealing spray just to keep it all on there so it doesn't wipe away, but let's go ahead and See how this goes. The stamps feel like a really heavy duty, rubbery, bendable material. I tested it out a few different ways and the easiest I found to apply the ink is by pressing it down directly on the stamp. The first stamp I chose ended up being a bit big for my piece and I also smudged it. So luckily it easily wipes away just with some water. So we are going to try again. This next try I focused on setting it in the middle first and then trying to use my fingers to press it down but again, I just didn't get it quite right. It kind of smudged and moved, so I'm trying it again. All right, so after I did my first one, I will say that practice makes perfect, and I do think I picked one of the hardest items to start with. This was a very slippery medium. It was also slightly rounded, so it took a lot of very careful, gentle handling, as you could see. Um, I had to do it multiple times, so I do like the way it turned out. It's very like, um, I don't know, kind of aged. Some of the letters look like they wore away. And I'm just gonna let the ink dry, try not to touch it, and then go in with a sealer to protect that one. I did bring in my smaller Crocs. I added, I wanna say four to five coats of the sealer on those. Hopefully I'll be able to wipe the ink off. I'm gonna do a little test on the side here because um, these are also a rounded shape and they're very small. So I'm gonna have to pick one of these. I think I'm gonna try this one and this one just because, or maybe this one.
Let me know what you guys think of how the Crocs turned out and if you would ever try these stamps yourself. I went and grabbed this air dry clay because I have this with flat edges that I think would be really cool to try out with one of these stamps in the clay. So let's see if that's any easier and how it turns out. The first attempt, I didn't press the stamp down enough in the middle, so I just flipped it over and tried again on the back. There is definitely a learning curve when it comes to using these stamps, but I really think that each time will get easier and I'll just find pieces that are easier to work with over time. I decided to use my box cutter to just cut around the label and I just barely used any pressure to do this part. Before applying the label to the glass, I applied a little spray adhesive and gently pressed it all around and then put it outside to let the clay dry before I painted it. Here is my ceramic planter. I did go in and add another coat, so this is two coats of the gray mineral chalk paint and then I'm just going to be reusing the same mixture from earlier that I used on my wood piece. This is the white wax. So I am going to be using a little bit different of a method when I apply and remove this. With the wood, I was really going in and using a lot of muscle to remove and press a lot of the white wax out of the wood, whereas this one, I'm going to apply the white wax just a section at a time, and then I'm just gonna go in and kind of blot this off. So it's just a different type of material. I'm using chalk paint, and I think if I go in and really scrub it, I would scrub some of the chalk paint off. So that is the plan. Let's go ahead and get started.
I just love how this piece turned out. The white wax method on wood and pottery have both turned out so well and exceeded my expectations. Now that the wood piece is dry, I'm going to put the tablescape together. I have been so excited just to see my vision come to life and just see how it's going to all look. Baby's breath just seemed like a timeless floral to add to the bud vases and really gave that vintage feel. Now that the clay is dry, I'm going in with the same mixture of gray and white paint that I used on my Crocs, and I think using some aging wax on the label will really help the letters pop. I'm excited to keep practicing and trying out this clay label method on some of my bigger planters on my front porch for spring, so stay tuned to see how those turn out. Make sure you let me know which DIY was your favorite for this video and if there are any that you plan to try yourself. As always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and that you are subscribed and I will see you in my next one. Have a great day.